All right, we are live. 7:14 p.m. Three minutes late. I want to aim for 7:11 to 9:11. Two hours. Two very important numbers. 7:11. Trump gets sentenced. Although I'm looking forward to Steve Bannon's sentencing with a little more excitement. That's going to be on the first. Getting arrested is the new getting swatted, and then after that, it's going to be getting assassinated. It used to be getting canceled. Then it was getting swatted. Then it's getting arrested. Then it's going to be the uh, the next level. Let's let a few others show up, and let's see what we're going to talk about tonight. Last night, we got cut off. We were live for about 70 minutes, and we were about to talk about Joe Olstein or Joel Austin, and whether or not he's Mandela affected. Because many of the affected ones do believe that the guy's name has changed, and I'm wondering if he's noticed. But right in the middle of that conversation, the live stream went down because the power went off and on. It flickered. We had gusts of winds. I mean, it was like 60 miles per hour winds. And it, weirdly enough, the passenger side, I'm sorry, the driver's side mirror, the river mirror, which is another Mandela effect, if you didn't know, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Apparently it doesn't say that or it changed. But anyway, the wind blew my mirror off. Like, I, I saw it was rattling. I knew it was loose. I knew it needed attention. But the wind was just shaking it back and forth so much that when I was driving, it literally fell off, which is kind of weird and ominous. Uh, today's the solstice, by the way. And there's a lot of interesting stuff we talked about last night having to do with the solstice. Specifically, we went from Gemini into Cancer. And we have the Boeing Starliner disaster mission right now going on. And there's the two astronauts who are, in this instance, being treated as twins, the two Williams, or Wilhelm and William. But for the purpose of this, you have the, the pair, and they're about to descend to the Earth. And for the first time ever, they're going to descend to the Earth, not into the ocean. It's not going to be a splashdown. So they're going to come down in this capsule, and they're going to land here in New Mexico. And before I found out about this, I was already comparing it to the man who fell to Earth, as far as the symbolism. And in The Man Who Fell to Earth, starring David Bowie, his character, the alien, Thomas Newton, actually does land here in New Mexico. But more, there's this story within astrology, you know, there, this is, again, not me, this is just what is associated with this symbolism, that the Cancer Gate, that the symbol, the crab, the summer, the summer solstice, represents the point at which souls of man enter into this realm. And the other gate would be the gate of gods, and that would be on the winter solstice where souls ascend. And so it's notable here that as this cancer sign in, is replacing Gemini, we have this rocket with these uh, twin, with these two astronauts, and they're about to descend to the earth. And I'm saying this is all ritual drama that this is some kind of ceremony about reincarnation or something. And we talked about this last year, looking at the descent of the Titan submersible. And the theme here is the descent, and that's what the sign represents. We're waiting, but the thing is, their mission has been delayed further. They can't figure it out, something broke. They're not coming down until the 26th at the earliest. And this mission has been doomed from the very beginning, and anyone who had any doubts about our methodology should probably by now be recognizing that we are indeed reading the scripts. I mean, this one was, I think it was pretty obvious. But obvious or not, you shouldn't be able to predict stuff, you know, these types of disasters or incidents with such regularity, which we do. You know, I've been saying for some time, if we can just quarantine the 33-year-olds for a year, we'd have world peace. Wouldn't have had the QAnon shaman and then just the other day in New York, there was some 33-year-old on top of a 10-story building throwing debris onto the people below. All right, we're joined by Clockwork113, Kevin Mooring, HLG, P. Trippa, Elephant Tusks, Diana South, Frank Murr, Ted Stryker, Rocco Calzone, How's It Penguinati? Yes, live on YouTube. James Osman, Symbia, Phil LeBlanc, AJ206. Tim Osman, thank goodness we have the globe model to predict everything in the sky perfectly. Look, I've already said this. If you can convince me that it's a globe, that's cool, but 
you're still going to have to explain away NASA's terrible representations of it. The fact is they have put a filter on it. They've misrepresented it. We have not been shown the real thing. You know, interestingly, I was at this antique uh, shop today, and I was just kind of browsing around, and I came across a couple of things that I thought were interesting. One of them was a copy of Stuart Brand's Whole Earth Catalog. And if you're not familiar with this, this was in the late 60s, before we were shown the face of Gaia, the face of Tim Osman's God. There was this environmentalist who said, until we see the Earth in its entirety, we're not going to take care of it, we're not going to see it in peril, we're not going to understand how it's fragile hanging in the abyss. And he really advocated for, show us the whole Earth. And so the whole Earth catalog, I've heard about it, well, I actually saw it today. And it's just a big, giant book with the cover of the Earth on front, on the front of it. And it's, uh, I think it's some kind of environmentalist screed. I don't know. I didn't purchase it. And then, weirdly enough, I was walking around and I saw some furniture right out of The Shining. And then, of course, I found a copy of 2001 A Space Odyssey in a comic book form nearby. I'll post some pictures. I'm also going to post a picture of a haunted press club. I was kind of doing some research on the local press club. They didn't accept me. You have to be in broadcasting five years. And I think they think that podcasters are shady, which I, I understand. You know, are we press? Are we journalists? It depends on how you define journalists. But for the purposes of being, I guess, essential, we are. If you have an IPS press pass, if you didn't know, you are unlock downable. It doesn't matter if it's radiation or COVID's version 2024. Whatever they throw at you, if you have a press pass, if you're in the media, you're essential. They'll lock everybody else down, but the media has to be out there. Now, why is that? Well, it's because they have to tell us what's going on, and they have to form, rather, the version of events they want us to believe in. Because when we did a little bit of reality testing, we found that the version of events on TV didn't quite match what was on the ground. And that's actually what spawned the whole idea behind press passes. Let's go check out these empty hospitals. They're not empty on TV, but they are empty in real life. It's almost like the TV is an augmented virtual reality lens, like it's an Oculus that you don't have to wear on your head. All right, continuing, I want to see, again, thanks everyone for subscribing. We have a lot of members now on the main site, and I have plans to produce some members-only video content, which I think you'll appreciate. I'm working on quite a few things as it is, but let's see. Oh, yes, let's continue on this. Lando Rock, Shannon Jones, t Dog. 135 reporting for the deprogramming and that is what this is everything else is programming whether it's mainstream or alternative it's all programming and everyone is programmed especially truthers uh, no one's unprogrammed that's just not possible uh, you know unless there's some kind of I don't know organic brain dysfunction but you know you're just um, automatically immersed into this thing everybody's programmed uh, the only deprogrammed are those who voluntarily um, work their way out of it you can't wake somebody up. And I guess you could argue that the programmers aren't programmed, but I think it's somewhat debatable. Everything I imagine on the other side of the screen is on a need-to-know basis. For example, people involved in faking school shootings wouldn't have to know that space is fake. And the people who are faking space would probably believe that the stuff on the ground is all real. I'm sure they keep it compartmentalized. The only people who have the whole Earth view, or the, the whole world view, the whole picture, are, are those on the outside of it and who aren't compartmentalized, who know about the fakery above and below. There's a lot of people who know how fake stuff is on the news and the ground, but they believe anything that happens in space. But my point is, uh, we're pretty much the only group of people networking on the premise that it's pretty much the same fakery department behind all of it, above and below. And if you're only skeptical about one side, then you're in the box. You just have to let it go. Like, look, you can you can hold on to the ball earth. And you can cling to heliocentrism and all that. That's fine. Um, what we're saying is not inconsistent with the Copernican revolution. What we're saying is that the more fundamental and crucial issue here is 
worldview formation. How do you know what you know? And are you asserting to know things that you don't know? And people do it all the time. This whole thing makes, this whole thing, this whole, um, what do you want to call it? I mean, it's sort of like a religion in a way, but this whole filter just makes liars out of people. And it's not enough to say TV. It's not enough to say news because it's too ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's even in the food, in the soft drinks. The predictive programming is so unavoidable, of course, by design. We've been noting how the Mountain Dew have kind of been corresponding with the current PSYOPs, like the Maui Blast Dew direct energy weapon, right as Maui got blasted by Chinese space lasers. And then you had the Maui Star Spangled Splash, which seems to correspond to the Francis Scott Key Bridge splashing into the river. And the next one has to do with the 4th of July. I don't know what the hint on there was. Dewis and Paris says, Imagine dismissing as coincidence the sun being the same size as the moon in the sky observationally, yet one is 400 times larger and 400 times further away. They will say that you have advanced an argument from incredulity, but they're also reality compromised, impaired, I should say, reality impaired. The, the people who accept the model on faith and on trust are low information believers. And they lack, they lack, I think, the confidence. You have to have some level of confidence to question your own beliefs, and many of them won't. They really do lean heavily on the authority of the screen. A full moon is in a couple of days, I believe. I have a problem with the moon. You know, I, I, I do. I think, I think it's somewhat contradictory in a few ways. But the whole thing about the tidally locked slash synchronous rotation, I kind of think these should be mutually exclusive. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Today we want to get into, what was the biggest thing? Oh yeah, the solstice. Okay, the significance here. A climate activists were spraying orange paint or orange chalk powder all over the monument here, the Stonehenge, which some believe is an ancient. Some people believe that the Stonehenge was like erected in the 20s and given a fake backstory, which I wouldn't be shocked. But anyway, apparently they're having a demonstration here with the orange spray paint on the stones and this was mirrored in one of the Illuminati playing cards which is kinda weird which specifically had an orange colored sun so I don't know where they're getting their orders from yes longest day of the year summer sun what's this about an Antarctica expedition says Echo Charlie I believe Jaronism or one of these characters is going to the South Pole to observe a 24-hour sun my point being is, you can do this, you can do this experiment, or this observation rather, and make the claim that, okay, it's a ball, but you still have to explain away the bad CGI. The world as we have seen it depicted from the ISS is all through Photoshop, through a simulated environment. It's, it's not real. Why are they showing us a computer model? That's my issue here. Like, what are they lying about? They're, they're lying about whatever, it, I'm not sure. I mean, I posited yesterday that perhaps there's a more advanced civilization on a continent somewhere in the uncharted waters they don't want us to know about. That would be reason enough to fake it. All we're talking about is manipulating geography the way they manipulate the news. You think they manipulate the news to manipulate history, but maps are untouchable? Yeah, we'll lie about every fact for years. It'll become news. We'll lie about history. Everything's fabricated. But we're going to be truthful when it comes to depicting the one thing we care about most, natural resources. Give me a break. That's like the obvious motivation for why they would give us a false model and then give us a bunch of crappy special effects to cover it up. That's at the most mundane level to explain away the NASA fakery. But I think it goes much deeper. Diana South says the programmers are most likely compartmentalized. See, I think so too. Oh, and we aren't. See, we are deprogrammed and uncompartmentalized. We do have the big picture view. We have an authentic overview, overview effect. 
The overview effect is what astronauts lie about. They're all lying when they say this because it's not real. They claim that they go so high, they see the Earth in its entirety, and they no longer believe in countries or races or different religions. They just see humanity as one, and they want to save the Earth. They have this, what they call a cognitive boost, a cognitive shift. Their brain actually floats higher in their heads. Now, Mark Kelly didn't experience this, although Scott Kelly did, which this doesn't make sense because they're twins, but it seems to make sense because Mark Kelly didn't rise above politics. He became a Democrat senator when he went back to Earth. But you can find a list of people who are alleged to have experienced the so-called overview effect. I'm saying it's fake, that none of them have experienced it. There's even this group called Space Buzz, and they want to create an overview effect in a sensory deprivation tank for children. Yeah, th tell me that NASA's not a cult. Astronauts see space, or uh, from space, how incredibly beautiful but vulnerable the Earth is. And that's a huge part of it. Vulnerable because why? Not volcanoes, which have way more CO2 than we do, but because of man. This unique experience leads to a new perspective on our planet called the overview effect. But on the space buzz, children worldwide can experience it for themselves. Now, space buzz is you floating in a tank with an oculus over your head, sensory deprivation, and you're given a simulation of going really high up into space so you can look at the Earth from space. And then you come out of this thing baptized into the religion of nasatology. Like, this is one of the cultiest things I've ever seen. Now, they're showing you the face of God, like what Stuart Brand was saying. You know, show us the face of God. Show us Gaia. Now, again, they're lying. They don't have it, but we do. That's my point. Ironically, the people they would deride as, quote, conspiracy theorists or flat earthers have the overview effect because we have seen that the worldview is, in fact, just a model. We have seen it in its totality. We know that it's mostly a product of omission, lies by omission, and selective attention, selective focus. A product of censorship. But anyway, it's just a model. And it's not an accurate model. And I'm talking about the internal world concept, or mass delusion that we agree upon. As Napoleon said, history is lies agreed upon. Same goes with media. And the one that is collectively agreed upon, the one that we here on the fringe, the cutting fringe, disagree with, it doesn't line up. It doesn't line up. The map is not the territory. You're in a Truman Show. Tim Osman says, you guys are crackpots. No one in actual relevant fields believes in flat earth. Just a bunch of shills and mouth breathers at this point. I don't believe in it. Look, I think it's laughable. If somebody says, I believe in flat earth, I think that's laughable. However, if somebody says, I believe in globe earth, I'm like, that's laughable. Flurfs and glurfs. Go hang out together. Go debate together. For years. And just never get anywhere with it. Our point here is we are not, I'm not a believer. I, I'm taking a purely agnostic position. I don't have enough information to believe that the earth is flat. The Bible doesn't do it for me. I don't have enough information to believe in the ball as presented by NASA. Now, if you convince me it's a ball, fine, but you're not going to do so using the garbage imagery, the, the science fiction they've given us. And the fact that you believe in that says that you can't tell real from fake, and I'm not specifically only talking about Apollo 11, the space station, and all of the bloopers. I mean, there are hours and hours of bloopers. Another thing, just good example here, uh, take a look at the light diffusion during night dives. You know, scuba divers go diving at night to go record manta rays, mating, or whatever people do. If you look at that, the flashlight's beam is very constricted by the medium, by the water the light diffuses in a very specific way. It doesn't penetrate as far. And yet, when the astronauts are in space wearing helmet cams, you get the same effect. The same effect when they're docking. And yet, the photography, you can see forever. You can see for thousands of miles. You can see the Earth clearly. So how does that make sense? Well, you have to compare the two. So to me, I don't trust that source. But that doesn't make me a believer in some alternative model. Okay, continuing. 
Tim Osman says, who is a legit flat earther at this point? Cow Patty Steer, Sergeant Jaron, Witsit, Dearth. You guys think these people have special knowledge over the world of brilliant people we live in. No, I do see a bit of Dunning, is it Dunning-Kruger? The Dunning-Kruger effect? I do see a lot of that, and I don't think there's any sense in debating these subjects, because the people who are advocating for the globe model don't know that the worldview that the consensus shares is highly uh, manipulated, that it doesn't match, and that's a bigger problem or a bigger question. I mean, to me, it's more about worldview than the shape anyway, and they don't know. So in other words, every person that Witsit has ever debated believes the official story of 9-11 believes the official story of what happened in 2020, believes the official story of fill-in-the-blank, all the fake shootings, all the fake terror attacks. Uh, so if they believe all this stuff, then why would you debate them anyway? That's a side question. But another point of it is, uh, they trust the screen as an argument from authority, and that is a logical fallacy. They hand wave away any legitimate criticism when it comes to the visual effects. I'll say, hey, look, this is green screen. This is uh, augmented virtual reality. Uh, they don't actually see this. That's AVR. This is an example of a bad editing, crossfade, transition being inappropriately used. And you point out these things, and the people who believe NASA say, uh, I don't believe you, or that's just what it looks like in space. They just come up with the most ridiculous non-explanation, and they ignore it. They'll say, you're just incredulous. It's like, if so, if I'm incredulous when I say this looks fake, then prove it's not. Because real should be self-evident. It shouldn't be hard for you to prove this stuff is real. And look, I, I want to point out one other thing. You cannot take a selfie with the ISS in the background. It can't be done. I, I don't care about your transits with your $20,000 telescope with a filter over it to do a solar transit or a lunar transit where there are no eyewitnesses. I want to see those who claim that they've seen the space station record it with their phone, with them in it. Uh, do a selfie. Record it going over your shoulder to prove that you predicted it based on the app. Nobody can do it. It's not possible because it's not there. Well, anyway, um, as far as who's legit on this thing, no, I've said from the beginning, anybody who's posited a model uh, was putting the horse before the cart. But now, seven, eight years later, anyone still stuck at that? Uh, it's... I don't know what to make of it. Like, I saw Dearth on InfoWars, and he still hasn't confronted the whole concept of the going through Antarctica, because the Navy will stop you. There's no answers there, and there's no connection to the, quote, real world, which is equally fake in many ways, but Alex Jones wanted to talk about Trump, and just seemed like the Flat Earther representative wasn't interested in it. So it makes it look like it's kind of an escapist thing, but it doesn't go anywhere. I'm not interested in it until somebody decides to go deep, deep south or really, really high, as demonstrated by our support of the Daredevil and his space program. And it was a viable space program. That's why the Science Channel was doing a show about it. And again, he died during the filming of the Science Channel program, Homemade Astronauts. It's often been misreported as during a flat Earth experiment, which is not what happened. Uh, we financed a successful launch. Okay, let's continuing here. Uh, I would just look. Uh, Tim Osman here is is really hung up on the whole flat Earth meme. Um, you're in the wrong place if you're hunting flat Earthers. You know, people who are flat Earthers are almost as bad as globe Earthers. They're low information believers, and they're satisfied without having tested their own claims. Like we're not in that camp. Like you have more in common with them than with us. What we're doing media criticism, auto-hoaxing, skepticism at this level is a little more advanced than that. But I think it's funny that you get triggered by Flat Earth, but honestly, I could care less. I mean, show me it's a ball, but don't tell me to believe in cartoons. Just take a real picture of it. Okay, continuing. Oh, by the way, um, Mark and Patty are back, and they're live, and there must be a reason for it. We've been wondering about this. So it should give us an indication of where this topic has gone. I'm very curious, too. I want to know who's going deep south to Antarctica. I guess that's my next thing. I'll be following that, and I volunteered. If whoever said they're going to go bails, I'm going to do it. 
Symbia says, I feel like you told Timmy this over and over again, and he keeps coming back saying the same dumb stuff. His life must be so boring. Yeah, I kind of I kind of think that it's not going to go anywhere until somebody makes a move. Somebody has to go south. That's why we don't talk about it. We rarely talk about it. Like, I can't remember the last time we sat there and, like, let's just talk about the shape of the earth. It's not even interesting. I mean, I don't see it as curved, but I'm not a curvert. If you say that you can see a curve, you're lying to yourself. Good for you. You fit in with the world. But you don't see the curve. You're lying. You know, I got an invitation to go flying with a a, a flight... A, someone actually trains people. A, a Quincy. So he's a flight instructor, and he invited me to go out to wherever he is. And he'll take me on a flight, and I'll interview him in the air. So I thought, you know, that's probably... a smart move. Maybe I can get some questions answered. I'll field questions from you all, obviously. And I had him on last time, and he gave me some insights about chemtrails. And he just said, hey, just as a rule, the temperature decreases by a couple of degrees every thousand feet. So if you're looking at you know, 20,000 feet, it's kind of self-explanatory. But um, as a pilot who doesn't believe in NASA, he's caught a little bit of flack. In fact, uh, Mick Toon has tried to have his pilot's license revoked unsuccessfully okay continuing King Ravana says longer life equals off grid I'd say prove it you know I have yet to see anybody leave the grid it's usually people who are you know, just mainly hyping up the idea of an apocalypse but nobody's living off the grid and nobody who complains about AI or techno technological advancement are willing to put away their iPhones like, hey guys, we're moving into the Black Mirror Nightmare Universe, and they're still holding the iPhone. I'm like, well, that's the portal. I think Mark Zuckerberg actually calls iPhones portals. Ted Stryker says, I saw a meme with a kid from The Shining wearing an Apollo 11 sweater. Oh yeah, that's real. In fact, they show him playing with these trucks and then a rocket and he stands up and it kind of mimics the launch of the Apollo 11 and the floor has the hexagonal patterning in the in the Overlook Hotel which corresponds to the Apollo 11 launch site at the Kennedy Space Center and that's just one example of many that connect Kubrick to the Apollo 11 hoax and people look at that and they say he was secretly a truther he was telling us he felt bad he wanted to drop hints not the correct explanation because the same movie contains references to the assassination of JFK and references to 9-11 which hadn't happened yet. Buzzing Fret says this is not a cult. Uh, maybe it is because the dominant paradigm is in fact a doomsday cult. Uh, mankind is collectively part of a doomsday cult. They do believe it's the end times whether it's a religious framework or scientism. If you believe the science, you believe climate change, the world ends in a, in a couple of years. And if you don't believe it, you're a flat earther. So, get with the program, the world's about to end, give money to the World State Church. Pay Al Gorliani. But, it is a cult. And what we are doing here is stepping outside of the assumed you know, this, they all assume that we're on the same sheet, but the assumed frame of reference. Everyone's supposed to believe these certain things and respond predictably. And I don't want to take sides in any of their little political footballs, uh, football games. It's always the same anyway. They're recycling too much. It's getting boring. Everything from 2015, 2016 is resurfacing. They try to make Q cool again. Didn't work. Uh, they can't get anybody interested in JFK Jr. again, so they're trying to dig up JFK. That's not working. I think they even brought out Hillary Clinton, and there's rumors that she's going to surface. Like, how many times has she been fake deaded by the Qs? They keep saying Hillary Clinton got executed at Guantanamo. Because these bloodthirsty QAnon magas do, in fact, want to see mass executions. They're really big on that. I've been following Stu Peters, and I, I follow him because I'm just doing my research. And Stu Peters has been cranking things up a few notches, but he's also kind of engaging in full-blown just 
paranoia. Here's an example. He says, what's this poison they're spraying on us in the airplanes right now? Could this be the fake bird flu? And in the video, he's on a flight, you can see what appears to be some kind of mist in the airplane. Now, I want to point out something first. When someone says, what's the poison they're spraying on us in airplanes? Uh, you have to recognize the fallacy inherent in their framing. What's the poison they're spraying on us in airplanes now? This is a loaded question, and it assumes that this is a spray. And a spray is different than the condensation trail. It's not a, technically a spray, but a spray is, is just suggestive of a substance that is being uh, diffused. But what poison are they spraying? So whatever is being sprayed here, it's not air freshener, it's poison. That's his assumption. But anyway, others are saying it's water vapor. Listen, Fed, calm down. Okay, anyway, this is the this is just typical, typical Stu Peters. I'm looking at the comments and it's going back and forth. But that's the level that they're at. Uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. In fact, I make it a point to emphasize that what we are doing is we are splitting away from truth or veil entirely. We don't want people who are still falling for loaded questions. We don't want to be outnumbered. You see, there's for every skeptic, there's probably 50,000 low information non-believers, people who will just choose to not believe anything the mainstream says. That's not the same thing as what we're doing. And if you let in someone who falls for these types of things, uh, they, these are umbrella conspiracies. If you believe in chemtrails, you must therefore believe in somebody who's spraying the stuff. Then you have to believe that it's even possible that there's a mechanism for it. There's all kinds of things built into it. But a lot of the times these things are also funnels. So you start off with chemtrails and it will lead you down the path and eventually you're in Trutherville and then you just buy into everything else. Now everything is scary. Well, that again, it's because of how they're processing information. That's why they're following the breadcrumbs. That's why they're gathering around other truthers and repeating things without investigating their own claims. And again, we're not part of that bunch. All right, moving on. T Dog says there's a Pokemon by the ISS dumpster. Yeah, I've made this comparison before because people will say, Oh, you don't believe there's a space station? You can just download the app. And it'll tell you where it is. I'm like, well, you can download the Pokemon app, and it'll tell you where the nearest Pokemon is. And there's probably one by your dumpster. Now, I've never played that game, but I used to see people walking around with it. You know, after the Aurora sh fake shooting, I went out to Colorado, to Aurora, to see the monument they put up in memory of those who were fake killed by James Holmes, the Joker shooter. And they had this monument built out of swans, and it's like a pyramid of swans, and it's by the courthouse. And when I pull up, I see people walk in circles around it, like walking all around. And I thought, wow, these must be mourners or crisis actors, because how do they get so many people here for the event if it was fake? And I'm under the presumption, well, I know it was fake, but I thought that was kind of curious. So I get closer, and I don't really see any flowers at the base of this thing. So why are these mourners here, but they're not bringing flowers. Well, then I note that they're not even mourners. They're actually part of what was set up by the city to be a Pokemon hunt at the courthouse and the grounds there. And so they put these little characters in this area, which brought a crowd. And so from the outside, it looked like the unveiling of the sculpture was accompanied by mourners. But no, they were hunting for things that don't exist. Anyway, I don't mean to get sidetracked, but um, I was just pointing out here that when somebody says you can see the ISS with an app, it's like you can find a lot of stuff with an app, but because it's on an app doesn't mean it's in reality. See, this is the issue. The map's not the territory. They have merged the meatverse with the metaverse in the minds of the brainwashed. And what epitome, I think that is the epitome of brainwashing, someone who literally holds the screen in front of their eyes and uses that to navigate the world as though it gives them a clearer picture when it really makes you subject to all sorts of hyperstitions and it puts you on the same sheet with well everyone else 
collectively agreed upon mass delusion. Buzzing Fritz says, is Dirth's app legit? Um, you know, I've heard some things about it. I haven't tested it. I, I don't have any inclination to using the app. Um, I, I heard that it was stolen, that he was beta testing an app created by Zoom Truth, and he had the money and the capital, so he just built it. And then he accused Zoom Truth of being lazy, sitting on the couch eating chocolate and drinking beer or something. He just totally stole it. So I won't even touch it on principle. And I couldn't convince Zoom Truth to file a some sort of a claim against that because I know, I know the app as far, as far as on on the I think on I'll have to check, but I I got to check the number of ratings. I'm pretty sure it's a successful app, but I haven't used it. Uh, another reason I haven't used it has to do with the potential of being tracked or followed by somebody whose initials are fed. You know, Flat Earth Day, Fed, doesn't inspire a lot of confidence here. Okay, moving on. Uh, King Ravana says, was it orange hair, Holmes, or green hair? It was orange. And it opened up. So if you were there the night of the shooting, before the shooting commenced, there was a trailer for a Sean Penn mobster movie where, in the trailer, mobsters come through the movie screen and shoot everybody up. And then James Holmes walks in and he shoots everybody up, if you believe the story. If you believe the story, you're a low-information believer, and you probably don't know why you believe it. You have no business saying I believe it, if you can't tell me the body count. If you can't tell me the name of the medical school nearby, where they were doing drills for mass shooting events that same night. Like, we are informed non-believers. I'm working on an ebook right now, and the working title is Informed Disbelief. Because what we're doing here, our claims are based on our informed um, opinions rather than knee-jerk, reactionary rejection of just anything said by the other side. Okay, continuing. Echo Charlie says, Google Maps is accurate, Tim, scarily. Yes. Well, I don't have any paranoia about being tracked, to be quite honest. I mean, I already have someone who's worse than... Uh, I don't know what this person is, the person I'm suing. But he's connected to agencies, I'm sure. We'll have some updates on that, by the way. He has uh, six more days to respond to the summons. And I had a brief conversation with Google last week, and they want to do the usual motion to try to dismiss, and I filed paperwork to add the YouTube employee who exchanged emails with Goldfinch. I'm adding him as a John Doe defendant, and then I'm going to ask the court to identify this person. So it's far from over. It's just getting started. The first uh, pre-trial meeting is going to be in July, and I hope it goes to trial. I, I have no interest in uh, trying to get a settlement out of Google or something. I mean, they're 100% responsible for this, but I, I don't care how, how long it takes, necessarily. It, it, to me, this is a matter of principle anyway. They need to take responsibility for this, but also, if you look at who they are, there's a likelihood that they had a specific interest in silencing the IPS, and that's what I want to find out. I want to find out if the person who collaborated with Goldfinch did so for the purpose of shutting down somebody who keeps saying the Earth isn't what NASA says. I mean, it could have been targeted. And I, I tend to think so, but I'm not going to speculate. I'm going to just let the uh, facts uh, speak for themselves as I can acquire them. Okay, continuing here. Today is the solstice, 620 24. All right, we have something here. This is an answer to Stu Peters being worried about that vapor in the plane. He says, I was in the Navy, and they turn on the ECS, Environmental Control System, and fog comes out of the vents. It's caused because the air coming out is cold and dry, and when it hits the warmer, humid air, it causes the water to condense. It's completely normal and harmless. 
So in other words, airplanes have interior chemtrails because that's what chemtrails are, condensation. This to me is another example of where the uh, truthers have it 100% wrong and they're immediately going to reach for the loaded question, what are they poisoning us with? Well, uh, water vapor apparently. A flubbed climate test won't deter rich donors from altering the sky. So those of you who are scared of geoengineering, it doesn't work. They just terminated this big study. It was supposed to last for months, but it lasted for 20 minutes. The Environmental Defense Fund is behind this solar geoengineering research. Their goal is to support the basic science needed to assess the role of aerosols in the stratosphere. So this conspiracy about stratospheric aerosol injections blocking out the sun yeah it's not even viable yet like this evil plan that the chemtrail truthers are always citing it doesn't actually exist and they tried it and it flubbed and by the way that's good news you know it's good news that the thing you were scared of doesn't exist it's good news nukes don't exist it's good news bowl cut shooters don't exist if you think that these are um, examples of hate speech or maybe I shouldn't be saying this stuff then you've got a problem you're nihilistic morbid and misanthropic Chem oh, this is continuing proponents argue that humanity is already geoengineering the earth's atmosphere by pumping carbon emissions into the atmosphere it makes global warming worse uh, chemtrails involves widespread confusion and inaccurate suggestions that say that the government is already geoengineering us. So this is kind of confusing. You see, the term geoengineering has been misappropriated by the chemtrail proponents. They believe geoengineering is man altering the climate. Well, man altering the climate is called climate change. But the people on the left who believe in climate change do believe in climate change, but they believe it's caused by CO2, not by chemtrails. My point of it is both sides believe in climate change. One side thinks it's being done by chemtrails. The other side thinks it's being done by the market activity, our carbon footprints, our breathing. So who's right? Well, I'd say they're both wrong, but they're in agreement, is my point. But here's the bifurcation. If you're on the left and you think the world is being destroyed by the other side, your conclusion is going to be, therefore, it's the free market, the private sector. If you're on the right and you think the world's being destroyed by the other side, you're going to blame what they represent, government, secret government programs. And that's kind of what we see here. That's why they blame. For example, you'll see leftists will say Elon Musk is increasing global warming because of his rockets and because of what they're releasing and their uh, CO2. Well, the other side will blame Bill Gates for canceling the sun. That's what I mean by bifurcation. Each side just points at the other side and blames them for what isn't actually even happening. Okay, moving on. Roger Stone is claiming that Baron Trump was not involved in the S-coin with Martin Shkreli. So, if you didn't hear about this, Baron Trump is associated with some kind of MAGA cryptocurrency, and they use Baron Trump's name more or less to hype it up. That's what it looks like. So we're looking at this guy named Martin Screlly, who launched a coin, DJT. It's a meme coin, and they've basically launched it on the claim that it was created on Baron Trump's computer. Well, this whole project might actually be some kind of a fraud, Roger Stone is claiming that Baron Trump was not involved in it. So I don't know what the truth is yet. Is Baron Trump involved in some kind of crypto scam? I mean, it's kind of on brand. You know, he's 18, working with these people. So he's, he's like kind of getting into the game, possibly. You know, if true. Someone says, I'm surprised his mother left, let him out of her sight. You know, if you watch that movie, A Man in Full, based on a Tom Wolfe book, they did repurpose it to be about the Trumps, and the Baron Trump character in that movie is certainly doted on 
by the one representing Melania Trump. But in the movie, they're separated. In the Netflix series, A Man in Full. In the in A Man in Full, the character that the Donald Trump character is married to would more accurately be based on Ivanka Trump. I mean, really, the leftist media is so deranged. Okay, we have a prediction here. This is a prediction that you've heard here before, but this is their own twist. Top researcher predicts false flag attack in space will trigger the next war. And this is on InfoWars. So apparently he hasn't been liquidated. Any kind of way to generate revenue from wars is really what it comes down to. And all this stuff is, uh, you know, is, is controlled and pre-planned including this whole Russia-Ukraine war, this Israel, uh, you know, a war in Palestine. This is all about generating a great deal of money, stealing land and stealing resources, just like they did in the ancient tablets. There's nothing changed. These are like the last two wars we can find to fight right now on the planet. Maybe there's one more with Taiwan, I'm not sure. But the next war is going to be in space. So they're going to take their little change that they can make from these right now. But the next big war is going to be a space war. They're going to take these UAPs. A space war. And UAPs, uh, what are UAPs? Well, UAPs are the new UFOs. They go from unidentified flying objects to unidentified aerial phenomenon. That they've done reverse engineered alien craft. They're going to do a, a, a Gulf of Tonkin incident again, like they did to launch the Vietnamese war. They're going to strike or, or hit or blow up a Navy vessel or something like that with one of these UAPs. Now, I agree with them, although I don't think they're going to attack a naval vessel, I think they're going to attack the ISS. I think the ISS is in the sights. Or maybe the Chinese space station, which has terrible special effects. Like, if you believe in the stuff, that's cool, but to me it looks like it's just religious art for your cult of NASAtology. But you got to explain away these other space agencies, because they're coming out with their own space stations, and they're not improving the special effects. I expected more from the Chinese space agency. As I said before, it looks like they ordered their version of the ISS from Wish... King Ravana says, bowl cut shooters are fake. Best news of the 21st century. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's some pretty, I don't know, I, I'll just say compelling clues that the shooters from Littleton, uh, Dylan, Clybold, and, and, and Harris, that these two characters um, didn't actually die, but they were actually repurposed, or it was a gig, perhaps, but they may have resurfaced. Eric Harris and Dylan Kleibold may have re resurfaced as Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I think they're all from the same area, aren't they? But yeah, there's a conspiracy theory that Dylan Kleibold and Eric Harris are Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Not difficult to find. Um, I 100% see it. I mean, maybe I'm biased. Personally, I don't have any interest in believing this. But it just looks right to me. And it seems on brand for these two, that this is something they would do. It makes perfect sense. They would go along with the agenda. Because if you're on the left, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever position you're in, you may be willing to do a PSYOP if it matches your own, you know, ideological bent. So why wouldn't they do a gun grab PSYOP? Now, this connection here, uh, I looked into it. It goes even a little deeper. If you consider how the Columbine Massacre was right on the heels of the Matrix's release, and they had already compared the style of the trench coat mafia uh, to the Matrix and the stylized violence. It just has too many media connections for me to think it was real anyway. And there's plenty of compelling suggestions and conspiracy theories calling it a, quote, false flag. Well, there's no such thing as a false flag. It's either real or it's a hoax. There's no middle ground. There's no such thing as a false flag. Just thought I'd clear that up. So when Alex Jones and his buddy here say that there's going to be a false flag in space, uh, they're lying. There are no false flags. They're, there's going to be a hoax. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because if it's a, quote, false flag, it means people die. It means real terrorism happens. Or it's a real event. That's not the same thing. The media reporting on a real event is not the same thing as the media constructing a simulation. And we're looking at simulations every time. And if you have any kind of examples or any evidence to suggest that one of these things we're talking about wasn't totally simulated, uh, let us know. 
we've been waiting. And it's just dragging on. And, and the longer this goes on, the longer we're vindicated and the more we're vindicated. And I noticed it's been years and years. I mean, you can mock the, quote, flat earthers for sticking to their guns there, but NASA hasn't exactly provided anything of quality to uh, convince them. They haven't improved their evidence. They haven't even tried. All they try to do is they try to shame people, which doesn't work. Okay, moving on. Honeybee says, I hope Don Petit is up there. Well, the ISS is, is gross. It's, it's gross. It's gross inside and out. Don't use the plastic wear if you're ever, you know, in space. Astroplastic. I would never use it. But, yeah, they're having some issues right now. In fact, uh, astronauts are still stuck in space as Boeing tries to figure out what's wrong with Starliner. Again, this here, just this headline, suggests that we're right in our assessment. Based on Leave the World Behind, we made the connection to the spate of incidents happening with the Boeing aircrafts. And then we saw that Boeing Starliner was this upcoming mission, and we called it out. We said, as per predictive programming, this mission is going to be a disaster. And they've had issues with thrusters. They falsely, NASA falsely played some kind of simulation or a drill with astronauts in distress, and then they said that was fake. They've had numerous in, uh, problems with this whole thing, but now they're actually stuck in space. It says here, quote, in short, and this is from space.com, no, futurism.com, Boeing's first crewed test flight has instilled little confidence, and there's a lot that could still go wrong. So they're not out of the woods yet. And look what it says here. Astronauts are stuck in space while the space station tries to figure out what's wrong with Starliner. Quote, who could have seen this coming? Yeah, we saw it coming. Because our frame of reference is Netflix. Because we live in the Netflix universe. And the Disney universe. And the Marvel universe. We live in a number of overlapping fictional universes. Kind of a multiverse. A multiverse of fakery. It seemingly took a quote, this is from the, the article from Futurism, a small miracle for the Starliner to limp to the ISS in one piece. But the company is far from being out of the woods. The spacecraft managed to make it to the outpost with Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. So Will and Will, this is your Gemini twins. The journey didn't go by without a hitch. They had five different helium links, uh, leaks. Five helium leaks affecting their thruster system. But they've extended the stay. They won't be back. More can go wrong. We'll continue to follow this. The other thing about this mission is that they're going to land on the ground, which has never been done. Uh, by the way, today, according to Synchromorpheus, is... Simulation Ascension Day. Oh no, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow is Simulation Ascension Day. From the movie 13th Floor. So I, I haven't seen the 13th Floor. I, 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 might, I might have watched part of it, but I'll have to go back and see it. But the movie The 13th Floor has something about Simulation Ascension Day. I'll have to look that up. I kind of like the sound of it. Simulation Ascension Day. I'll look into it, but it's tomorrow, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. I'll just put that in my notes. Okay, moving on. Oh yeah, big news here as well. Uh, I already messaged JL about this. Uh, Donald Sutherland, who is the President Donald Snow in Hunger Games, has died at 88. 88 is a number heavily associated with the Donald Trump death hoax, with the Biff Tannen version of him in Back to the Future, which is 100% based on Donald Trump. So you have the name Donald the 88, the president, Do President Donald Snow. I mean, he's the the actor, and he's the actor who plays the president in Hunger Games, President Snow. But the names and the numbers, they all add up. Adds up to more predictive programming. Donald Sutherland starred in Mash, Hunger Games, Ordinary People. 
really a tremendous actor. I think I liked all of his work. I've seen many of his movies. Uh, when I was a kid, I was terrified of his role in... This is the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Iconic. In fact, I should paint this picture. I want to paint Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, where he has his index finger pointed to his temple. I'm trying to find iconic images from these various movies we reference, but when I think of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I think of Donald Sutherland uh, calling out one of the non-pod people. A successful PR stunt here. You might find this... I mean, it's, it's not interesting. This is just... It's just so obvious to me. Uh, Justin Timberlake was pulled over. He was arrested. And according to the Daily Loud... He, so, he said to the police that this was going to ruin his world tour. Well, nobody knew he had a world tour. Nobody was going to know because nobody cared. But now everybody knows Justin Timberlake has a world tour. Sort of like how nobody that I know, and myself included, was really following the Taylor Swift thing. But they made it impossible not to be immersed in it. So they're going to do this Justin Timberlake thing next. So this is a very successful PR stunt. Even if you're not in sync with his music, you're going to nonetheless find out about it and you're going to be targeted with this stuff. Okay, let's see what else going through your comments. Diana South says, Out of the woods, petrified forests in space. Well, what else? The moon rocks are 100% petrified wood. All right, moving on. Okay, this is great. Uh, this is a reference from our last live stream. Lean Dion brought this up. Uh, at four minutes and 36 seconds, you'll see a fake rocket launch. So here's an episode from The Simpsons where Lisa and Marge go to Mars. And it turns out that the Mars space program is fake. And why are they faking it? Well, they reveal it here on The Simpsons. So let's go ahead and move forward to this. 436, and shout out to Lean Dion, thanks for the link. One, ignition. It's not a real rocket. It's the outside of a real rocket. We did plan to build a real rocket. And that's one thing they can never take away from us. That plan is our legacy. Then why did you move up the launch if you knew it was fake? to inspire the next generation. And to provide a distraction while we drove away. Then why are you still here? Our car. All right. Why would you fake a Mars mission to inspire the generation? And what are we being inspired to do? To embrace this one world version of this one world heaven, you could call it a one world religion. But you know, you have your Christian heaven, your Muslim heaven, atheists don't believe in heaven, but everybody believes in space. Space is the new heaven, and it's really based, our concept of space, outer space that is, is based, I believe, mostly on theosophy, cosmism, Russian cosmism, from its very genesis. It's always been a repackaging of the archaic concepts of heavenly realms, celestial realms. It's never been a place where you're going to go migrate to. You're not going to Mars, I'm sorry to tell you that. If you are going to Mars at all, it's going to be some kind of Truman Show dungeon beneath China mining potatoes. I mean, I mean mining or farming potatoes and uh, terraforming, I suppose. Perhaps making candy for Willy Wonka, Trump, I mean, uh, Musk. Elon Musk and the Gene Wilder connections are worth exploring. It has this whole connection with the tunnels, underground bases. Yeah, this is a good find. This is from 2017. It's been years since this has been floating around. I had not heard of this, but um, The Simpsons is often cited as a repository of predictive programming. I tend to ignore it because there's so many episodes that it's like Nostradamus or something. You can just cherry pick and predict anything with it. But sometimes they're pretty specific. Uh, the Family Guy is way more specific. They had the two bombs before the Boston bombing and the character running over joggers. You had the prediction of the death of Robin Williams, which was aired at the exact moment that he was killing himself, supposedly. But all these cartoons, like all the movies and all the books, are integrated at, cer at a certain level here. 
Now this is fascinating. I was digging deeper into the James Cameron connection to the Rodney King story. So listen to the headline here. How James Cameron led to the LA riots. So now I'm starting to think that as Spike Lee is, in my view, is the director of the George Floyd PSYOP, I think James Cameron not only directed the Rodney King beating, but I think he might have been the stage, the, the director of the entire staged event. I mean, there's a point here where people are, I think, and a lot of us are looking at these things very objectively now, but there's a point where people are thinking that these events are instigated or stimulated, like they do a PSYOP, and then the people organically respond. And more and more, I'm starting to look at this stuff as big movie productions with, you know, um, propaganda, of course, um, put out there specifically to convince people there's more going on than what actually is. And if you're locked down, if you're not on the movie set, you might not know. I think Kenosha was a closed movie set at a certain point. And, and so the January 6th riots, for example, the January 6th insurrection, there were a thousand people participating in this staged event who were already moving into position before Trump's speech was over. And if you were listening to a speech, it would have been a 45-minute walk to go to where the action was. These things are all stageable, is what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure James Cameron could be credited with having staged the Cop City riots. But now, listen to the significance of this, because we had already encountered this information that, and this is from the article, that while the Terminator 2 was being produced, you had the Rodney King beating. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The film itself was recorded on the handicam of an individual named Holiday, And so it says, looking out of his balcony window, Holiday had perhaps the best possible view to see Rodney King's arrest. Using the camcorder, which minutes before he had recorded part of the Terminator production, he started filming. This is where the tape would go on to make history. So what's happening is he's filming from the sidelines James Cameron at work. He's filming the Terminator movie being, being produced at the bar scene. And then, on his way home, he sees the Rodney King beating and records that on the same tape. Interesting find. And this tape makes history. So this is where it goes, how James Cameron led to the LA riots. Because if he hadn't been there recording Cameron's work, he wouldn't have caught the Rodney King beating, and we wouldn't have had the LA riots. That's kind of the idea here. Uh, this story has been brought back in a few ways. You know, the George Floyd controversy started by a video. That was the inspiration for Jordan Peele's movie, Nope. If you haven't seen Nope, it's about a UFO sighting, or a UFO that um, can be, I guess, predicted, and then these people show up with the spectacle of it all. But Jordan Peele wrote this movie, he said, based on the, the spectacle of the George Floyd killing and the video itself, that 8 minute, 46 second thing. Now, the, the connection here though, is the, the video itself and how it triggered all the, the, the subsequent action. And so now I'm looking at this Rodney King video a little more suspiciously. Was it organic? Because here it's in the same area where James Cameron was, and I'm thinking, well maybe Cameron is ultimately behind the viewfinder there. It says, go back to March 3rd, 1991. Rodney King was driving west on I-210, goes on to how he got pulled over by the California Highway Patrol. He was speeding at 117. Now, I don't believe this event was real. We've already decoded the thing ad nauseum, but we all remember the video. They struck him with batons. He was going under, it was um, basically beaten to a pulp, but the person who filmed it was there recording Arnold Schwarzenegger. Fascinating connections. I posted a link in Minds.com how James Cameron led to the LA riots. And there's a side note here. Why was the villain of the Terminator 2 made to look like a police officer? Well, according to James Cameron, they wanted the villain in Terminator 2 to look like a cop because he said too often they were portrayed as heroes. So you have the evil villain cop archetype inserted into Terminator 2. And the movie itself again, has this interesting role in the creation of this bit of footage that incited the riots based on, well, cops being villains. Now, the villainizing of police, 
is also very consistent with James Cameron. It's very consistent with this Cop City riot, which I believe he directed, but also his wider criticism of what he calls toxic masculinity, testosterone's a toxin, uh, T2, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the you know paragon of toxic masculinity, big gun, uh, too much T. Uh, this James Cameron is a top tier meta scripter, but you can see the various areas where I think it makes perfect sense. Cop City is an anti-cop riot that merged environmentalist activism with BLM. He's a perfect person to synthesize these two. And then this is another thing too. So Cameron has the Titanic stuff. You know, he predicted programming for 9-11 in T2, in the Titanic movie. And on 9-11, he is at the scene of the Titanic filming a documentary. Titanic predicts 9-11, and on 9-11, he's at the Titanic itself. Like, all this stuff is adding up to a pretty fascinating picture. And it makes sense now that Rodney King would have been beaten for 1 minute, 19 seconds and hit 33 times because these numbers completely match everything else with the predictive programming with Cameron. Okay, moving on. Here's a picture from yesterday and this was shared on Discord by Dog Days. You can see the Illuminati playing card in case you don't have your own deck. Stonehenge. Orange glowing sun. And then of course the image from yesterday. See, these climate activists think they're doing some kind of a protest to save Gaia. And you'd think the Druids would be on their side, because the Druids were pretty much proto-Gaia worshippers, environmentalists, you know, nature worship. So I'm inclined to think that this isn't really a protest, but these are useful idiots taking part in some kind of Druidic ritual. It's too perfectly timed to the solstice. This has got to be a solstice ritual. The color orange, Stonehenge the timing of it. And these are, in fact, Earth God worshippers. They, they're part of the cult of Gaia. So therefore, I'm suggesting that this is a, uh, one of these uh, rituals in plain sight. Okay, moving on. King Ravana says, I worked at Lowe's stores that was burnt down in the George Floyd fires. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think these are all controlled demolitions, as in, at the very top, these are allowed to happen. You have operatives, agents. I, I don't think any of this stuff was organic. Controlled demolition. Uh, King Ravana says, artificial sunset ritual. Yeah, I think there's something very significant to it. I, I'm going to dig deeper, but I think the environmentalists are, you know, puppets, and they could be made to do anything. Okay, we talked about this. Top researcher predicts a false flag in space. I'm only pointing that out because uh, it is going to happen, but it's not going to be a false flag. Now, you know, we've been talking about the color pink ever since the Barbie movie and the significance of pink, which I won't get into now, but I call the Barbie movie the pink mass, and a reference to the black mass, which is the inversion of Christianity. Well, the pink mass refers to Barbie feminism and the reversal of traditional values in the nuclear family, etc. Everything that movie represents. But the color pink has some occult connotations as well. And we've discussed this at length. The pink sky, the pink background on the King Charles painting. And, of course, this Godzilla movie with the pink lasers. What is with all the pink? Well, we have this now. MAGA Republicans have declared this to be white boy summer. And they were at the Turning Point event in Detroit wearing white boy summer swag. It's all pink. Pink MAGA hats. Pink shirts. And it all says white boy summer. So I'm like, this is peculiar. You have the MAGA, and you have people like Ben Shapiro, who's on this side, who literally burned a Barbie doll in a trash can. Like, he, he burned her because... He was so offended by her values. And here they are wearing pink. I don't know what this means. I, I really don't. I, I mean, I understand they're trying to build a hype for the election, but I think there's something else here, kind of like the useful idiots at Stonehenge. 
I think there's something else. This is maybe it, it's connected to the same thing. In fact, it would make a lot of sense now that I think about it. Now that I think about it, it would make sense that the Magas would adopt pink. Um, see, you have red, and then you have white on the Templar flag. You have red in in the occult context, like for example, the last two Super Bowls. In the in the Super Bowl rituals that they do at the halftime show, the last one you had Alicia Keys in red, and Usher in white with the phoenix on his shirt. She represents the goddess. He represents the god. So the red and the white corresponds to goddess god. The year before is Rihanna. Red dress, surrounded by male dancers in white. Same dynamic. You had Kendrick Lamar in white as Christ with the crown of thorns, surrounded by women in red who covered him in blood. So this is a, a theme here. The red and the white represent the god, goddess, Christ, Magdalene, and the fusion of the two gives you pink. Babylon and the Beast. And so in the Barbie movie, this was what I was bringing up here, is that if you dig into the symbolism, like in the, I guess it's the uh, Thoth deck. So the Alistair Crowley designed these tarot cards, and the Holy Grail in the hand of the Whore of Babylon is filled with a pink elixir, is what they call it, an elixir of life. And it's pink because it represents the fusion of Babylon and the Beast, and so what I'm saying is that this pink is very significant because Maga, Maga, it means witch. And when you get into the symbolism of the scarlet and witch, it ties again to the same exact theme. Make America great again implies America has fallen. The Whore of Babylon story is all about Babylon has fallen. The world is intoxicated by her sorceries. The whole thing is she's a witch, sorceress. Well, Maga means witch. It's the feminine of Magus. So we've already connected the idea of the Maga across the brow, the mark on the forehead, the witch, the red, all of this, the scarlet, it's all correlated with this goddess entity, and so is the pink. It just represents the um, merging of the goddess with the god. So anyway, I, I think this is more than just some kind of... a a trend they're trying to kick off. I think there's a deeper meaning to the color here. As with the orange at Stonehenge. Okay, I'm, ca I'm catching up on your comments. Echo Charlie says, well played, Space Wars, where the IPS can't confirm anything. Right. We're just going to see it on TV. You know, that's one of the messages in Leave the World Behind. Rose, at the very end, makes it to the bunker and she's watching the world end on TV. And the Leave the World Behind's title is an anagram for Behold, the End War Live. And it, the connotation here, I think, is that we're going to behold this thing, we're going to experience the next big event solely through the screen. And I think this might be facilitated by lockdowns, hopefully for something more creative than what they did last time. I'm hoping for Fallout. And by the way, I finished Fallout. Jonathan Nolan, it's a masterpiece. I really think this is um, very insightful. If you consider Christopher Nolan and Jordan Nolan's work in terms of their roles as metascriptors, it is definitely prescient. I think it's pretty much giving us an indication of what's to come. And it's a PSA. They needed to educate the public about fallout itself and so they make these movies that way that you can you know more actively engage in the simulation their alternate reality game Ollie Goering says Rose is pink in French fascinating the character Rose in Leave the World Behind is the one obsessed with friends and is compared to Donnie Darko there's quite a lot we can go into with that movie, but we're living through it right now. Uh, Michael in Truth on Twitter posted this. He said, In the Got Milk episode of The Last Man on Earth from 2017, three years prior to the COVID, there's a viral pandemic lockdown, mask wearing, empty store shelves, 
and the 46th president of the United States dies during that episode. So here's a few episodes. It's called The Last Man on Earth. Episode Got Milk aired March 5th, 2017. President has, okay, presidential memorial coverage as they head towards Arlington Cemetery. 46th president, again, mentioned. Dead at the age of 61. Okay, a little younger, but the point of it is prescient. I may have actually have seen that. I didn't watch I didn't watch movies as closely back then. Okay, moving on. I have quite a few bookmarks here I want to get through. Okay, we talked about Baron Trump getting into the crypto scam. We'll find out about that. I've been following the Trump trial and all of that stuff. Nothing major developing here. And there is this attempt right now, I don't know if it's from the left, but there is an attempt, it seems like, to make it look like Donald Trump is losing his mind. And someone suggested to me that they're not going to do a JFK on him, but they're going to have him like lose his mind publicly. But I don't think they're going to, I don't think that's the case. I think we're looking at mostly selective editing and clips. And you can make anyone look crazy with clips. Okay, I'm going through my bookmarks, and if you want to follow me there, it's IPS Insider. Insider is the name of the tabloid that is going to be published. It won't be much longer before the first issue comes out. A witness tells House House Ethics Committee that Matt Gates paid her for. Yep, a uh, Matt Pizza Gates. Matt Pizza Gates is worse than Hunter Biden in every way. And for some reason, he doesn't get called out for it. It's just another example of hypocrisy. You know, Andrew Tate, human trafficker, but he's an icon to the right. It's like, what will it take to get on their bad side? To get them to uh, exile them. It's like they all have something on each other or something. That's why Ollie Alexander isn't in prison. Or Nick Fuentes, for that matter. All these individuals who are associated ought to have their laptops searched. Uh, I asked Michael Truth a question. I said, you do know that the Trump PSYOP will be fake, right? And he said, I know that all of the, quote, assassinations have been faked. The JFK one occurred 1,109 days after the 1960 election. Every assassinated POTUS has perfect numbers like that. I was reaching for clarification. I wanted to make sure that we have these channels that are calling this out on the same sheet. That no one here is actually asserting it's going to happen for real. That's a completely different take. Alright, moving on. I think I covered almost everything. Benny Johnson said they're putting fences around the Supreme Court. Now, he didn't come back and say, I was wrong. I didn't think. I didn't investigate. I just retweeted. I was just massaging my cognitive bias. No, Benny Johnson just shared this information. And then when it came out that it was fake, he deleted it. But he didn't apologize. And I think we need to remind people of their misinformation. If I put out some misinformation and you tell me, I will correct it. I'm not going to delete the post and pretend it didn't happen. I find there's this tendency for people to try to remain unaccountable for wrong answers, and they'll leave their wrong answers up, even following community notes being attached to it, because they're getting clicks. So apparently clicks matter more than facts. Clicks, not facts. It's because they're focused on, I guess, money and, and I guess, clout. Okay, here's a clip compiling all the instances of the number 113 showing up in Pixar films. It's a TikTok video with a generic soundtrack, but it just shows you how Toy Story, Ants, Wall-E, and every other Pixar movie you can find, the one with the superhero family, uh, Mr. Incredible, or The Incredibles, they all have the same number, 113, Cars, now, what is this? Well, it refers to the Blue Room, 
labeled 113 at Pixar. The animation classroom at the California Institute of the Arts. And it has no reference to adrenochrome, although some have tried to make that connection. But uh, my point in it is that 113 refers to Directive 113 in Wall E, having to do with the world is no longer habitable and you have to leave. Leave the world behind. Go into your bunkers. So 113 has those connotations. Then we have 311. So 311, 113, very consistent. When the president announces Directive 113, he does put on a mask. And this is in Wall E, which is really a great movie if you want to look at how they layer their worldview into these children's movies. You know, it's, it's really pretty deep. But Wall E is essentially a Noah's Ark story, but Noah's Ark in space. All of the symbols are there. They don't specifically mention it. It has a Hell 9000 like robot called Otto that controls everything. But anyway, they make it clear what 113 is. It's about abandoning ship. And 9-11 was followed by, of course, the towers go down. They replaced the towers with what? The One World Trade Tower, which opened on a 113, November the 3rd, 13 years later. So this is in 2014. But we find many references to 113 and 311, all kind of connecting to the same basic ideas. In this case, it was lockdown, leave the world, environmental catastrophe, forced mankind to abandon ship. Diana South says, what about false prophets who set dates, bet the farm on it, and disappear for a while? Yeah, I've been holding them all accountable. In fact, I've blocked most of them on Twitter. But I studied them to try to figure out how it all worked. And I realized that they're using something that you, you would call it the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. And it has to do with using so many, quote, calculators, these Dramatri calculators, that they get to a point where it's not even possible to be wrong. You just, you have the appearance of being right as long as you hone in on a few answers that are close together. It's kind of dishonest. It's a way to lend credibility to one's predictions, but then after the fact, you think that you'd be discredited, but what they do is they, they retreat. And they're always anonymous, which doesn't make sense. I don't trust anonymous prophets. I, just, I would also just recommend, um, if you're listening to prophets, don't trust the anonymous ones, because they're trying to dodge accountability for their actions. Go with the ones that are uh, licensed and bonded Michael and Truth also posted, 88-year-old Donald Sutherland died in Miami. He was the president in Hunger Games, 88 years, 11 months, and 3 days. A little, another 113 there. How soon for the staged event for Fat Donnie, he asks. Can't be much longer. I'm still looking at 8-4, but I'm not predicting dates. Okay, moving on. Uh, Elephant Tusk says, Monsters, Inc. was incredibly deep. Yeah, I, I want to watch that one as well. That's one of the movies that, that helped hype up the Adrenochrome scare. Let's see what else we have here. Apparently, we can connect now climate change to police brutality. With the lucrative politics of climate collapse and the greed that is literally letting our country burn. Today, millions of Americans from Iowa to Maine are suffering through heat warnings, watches, or advisories. Cities across half of the country, like Chicago... I'm sorry, but why are they always surprised? Every year, we arrive at the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, and they act like it's a surprise, that, you know, summer's starting, it's extremely hot. Like, this is something that happens every year. St. Louis, Indianapolis, Detroit, Philly, and now New York are hitting temperatures exceeding 90 degrees Fahrenheit, though it feels closer to 100. Many of these cities could experience heat indexes hitting 105 degrees by Sunday. These increasingly oppressive hot days aren't a coincidence. They aren't. They are the predictable impact of the climate crisis. 
And they're not just an inconvenience. They're also killing us. And anyway, this is the other point here. Uh, climate change disproportionately affects the oppressed, the poor. It's the rich versus poor. It's the same class warfare, but just given a different explanation. I'm not a believer. And I, I don't even buy into the middle ground of, oh, it's a natural cycle. Like, I don't even know if there's a cycle. Okay, so I got into this back and forth with a chemtrail pusher. And, you know, it went back and forth for some time. He was kind of incredulous that I didn't just believe it. And he kept trying to tell me to look for myself. And I, I really want to you know, hone in on these, these tactics that they're using. And I think I've unveiled something, which I'll be publishing in a short ebook soon called Informed Disbelief. But I think that there's a, a strategy here that has to do with recruiting people. You see, the whole system is based on their ability to hold your attention. And the people who are unplugging from the news, who kill their TV, um, they are flight risks. So they created this entire infrastructure for funneling, funneling them in to Trutherville. But they recruit them. And I've, I think I've isolated a number of tactics, breadcrumbing, that are used to funnel people in to a wider belief system. It's a cult recruitment tactic that I'm talking about here. And it's being used by controlled opposition conspiracy theorists to build up what we would refer to as the alt-media. Basically, the people that escaped the first box fall into this second box. And this second box has not been fully exposed. In fact, its main voices are still seen as credible by all the people within. It's pretty remarkable, but it's mostly based on uh, fear-based um, claims that are meant to, I, I think, get people to react emotionally and fall for very simple logical fallacies but my point of it is there's a strategy here uh, trutherville is a government paddock it's not where free thinkers go it's the alternative pen for those who have slipped out of the main one but it's 100 percent contrived and i'm going to be discussing this more at length and then tomorrow we'll talk about the ascension simulator which i'll be looking up here shortly tomorrow is 621 and that's a reference to the 13th floor, which I may take the time to watch tonight. Okay, let me see if I've missed anything in your comments. I'll have phones open tomorrow. I have to pay my blog talk radio bill. Totally worth it, in my opinion. It's two hours a night. You could have multiple callers on cue. My number has frightened a lot of people, a lot of the church lady types, because it has 999 in it. And to them, 999 is the same thing as a 666, which that number is very well misunderstood anyway. So my point of it is I like the phone system, but I have to re-up my subscription. I just wanted to try it for a month and see what everyone here thought. And I think we've had very good experiences with it. Uh, Elephant Tusk asked if I've watched Interstellar. The whole climate change narrative is front and center. I have not. Now, isn't Interstellar a Jonathan Nolan? Because Jonathan, he also did Tenet, which has a climate change theme to it. Okay, Interstellar directed it and his brother co-wrote it. I may have to check it out. I, there's so much programming to catch up on. And that's part of this. It's the sea of irrelevance. They drown you with so much that you cannot arrive at a cohesive structure to all the information you're assimilating. So you have to reach for the nearest blue check. But if your mind war inoculated, you don't need blue checks. If you have a blue wrench, you're pretty much the arbiter of what you think, what you believe. You're on the correct side of the screen. Right, we're going to continue this conversation tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to the new phone systems being turned back on. We have a lot of great callers here. It's generally some of the best callers and most informed on the cutting fringe. And 
you know, earlier someone had mentioned something about uh, flat earthers, etc., and where we are on that subject. And to me, again, it's it's really not about uh, shape. It's about worldview. Is it open or closed? And if you're in a programmed worldview or their programmed worldview, it's closed in the sense that you can research all you want, you can look all you want, you can investigate all you want, but there are certain things that are just off limits that are outside of its perimeter, such as the inclusion of special effects, perception management, psyops, and media fakery when discussing anything happening on the world stage. They want us to act as though these things don't exist. It's like saying politicians don't lie, priests don't lie. Because when we're talking about special effects and media fakery, what are we talking about? Just visual lies. And if you can't see lies, it means you're naive. It doesn't mean that you have a moral and intellectual high ground over conspiracy theorists because you can't see the lies. Really, it's kind of sad, actually. The fact that we can see the lies is, is not a, a, it's not a mark against our character which is what they want you to think. Oh, you're a non-believer. Well, yeah, I am. And you're a believer in lies. Like, what's better? Anyway, this has been fun. We'll continue this conversation tomorrow. This is Auto Hoax or GTFO by Chief Crow. I'll put a link below.